Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will consider um, three prob problems, which are, well, number one, they're very simple. Number two, you don't really need even the pen and paper or any, anything else, like a computer or whatever, to solve these problems. These problems can be solved in your head. And that's very important, actually, since the whole course actually is aimed towards developing your analytical thinking, your creativity. It's very important to have um, something like common sense sufficient to solve relatively simple problems. Um, all these problems I categorize as arithmetic, so they are presented on unizor.com. The name of the course is Math Plus and Problems. The category is arithmetic, and this is arithmetic number 09. 09. Um, so, um, and again, as I was saying, uh, I categorize as arithmetic because they're relatively simple, and all you need is just a couple of manipulations uh, with uh, numbers uh, just in your head, and uh, you will be able to solve these problems. Now, the whole course, Math uh, Plus and Problems, is uh, actually the second one. The first, the prerequisite one, is Math for Teens, which is basically a theoretical material. It's presented on the same website, unisor.com, and uh, uh, I suggest you to basically familiarize yourself with the first course. Um, uh, also, every lecture, which can be found on this website, unisor.com, um, is supplemented with a textual explanation, notes, or whatever, which basically looks like a textbook. It's a very detailed explanation of whatever I'm talking about. So it's both. You have the vis video presentation and you have a textual part. That's why it's very important, even if you found it somewhere on the U YouTube or somewhere else, it, it's fine, it's good, you can watch these lectures anywhere you want. Uh, but it's better to do it from the website because uh, you have this textual um, uh, explanation as well. Also, um, if you are talking about the main course, Math for Teens, it has exams, so you can take and basically check yourself. Um, uh, the site, the unisor.com, is totally free, no ads. Um, sign in is uh, optional if you don't want to don't or you you might need it only if you're uh, learning under somebody's supervision so then I just need to um, sign in to connect you and uh, your supervisor uh, teacher parent whoever so basically that's it um, let's do these problems okay problem number one you have a tank filled up with water and you have two pipes which can be used to empty this tank. Now, one pipe, pipe number one, can empty the tank in 14 minutes. Now, if you will use pipe number one and number two, so this is number one, this is number two. Then the tank will be emptied in 10 minutes. Question is, what if you use only pipe number two? How long will it take to empty the tank? Now, yes, you can obviously uh, use some algebraic manipulation, have a simple uh, equation and you will basically solve it. I would like to present the uh, particular way how to approach this problem without any kind of algebra, just a couple of common sense considerations, which you can do it in your head, you don't need uh, to write it down. So, what are these considerations? Again, it's very important, it's just common sense. You don't really have to be master of mathematics to solve this problem. Think about it this way. Okay, the pipe number one can solve, can, can em empty the uh, tank in 14 minutes and two pipes in 10 minutes. Well, let's have some kind of a 
common number which is divisible by both by 14 and by, uh, by, by 10. Let's, cut, uh, let's talk about 70 minutes. It's divisible by 14, it's 5, and divisible by 10, it's, it's 7. So what happens during the 70 minutes if I'm using only pipe number 1? Well, if it can empty the tank in 14 minutes, in 70 minutes, which is 5 times greater, it will empty 5 tanks. Right? So if this pipe is connected to five, five uh, as, as a tank which is five times bigger, then you will have it, five times more water. So it will in 70 minutes it will uh, go through five times greater than one tank. How about this one? If you will use both pipes, uh, if one tank is in seven in 10 minutes, then in 70 minutes it will it, it will be seven tanks. Okay, so what happens? You have 70 minutes. One pipe during this time will uh, let through five tanks of water. Both pipes, seven tanks of water. Well, if one is five and two of them is seven, then the second pipe contributes only seven minus five, which is two tanks. So in 70 minutes, the second pipe alone will empty two tanks. So one tank would be in 70 divided by 2, which is 35 minutes. So that's it. And again, I wrote it down just to explain to you, but basically anybody can do it in your head. So just think about 70 minutes. You have to really... Um, come up with idea of having something like 70 or 140 if you want. In 140 that would be what? 10 and that would be 14, difference would be 4. So again in 140 that would be 4, divide 140 by 4 it would be the same 35. So that's basically idea. The idea is to have the same time and see how much one pipe will go through during this amount of time and how much uh, water uh, the two pipe will let through. And that means that the difference is only the pipe number two. So that's, what, that's the idea. 70 minutes or 140 minutes, which is divisible by both numbers, that's the main idea. And that really is sufficient to very simply uh, solve the problem without even resorting to algebra. And yes, you can do it in algebraic, some kind of algebraic method. Um, just let's say um, x is number of uh, amount of water per minute for one pipe, uh, y would be amount of water for another pipe, then you will do this division con considering the, the, the timing uh, and you will equalize one tank divided by x, which is amount per, m per minute would be number of minutes for one, then the same tank divided by x plus y, when two pipes are uh, putting uh, the water through. That would be another, that would be 10. So you have a system of two equations with two unknown, solve it, we will get exactly the same thing. Okay, that's it, number two. Number two is really a joke. But again, it's a joke which, using the common sense, allows you to solve very simply. Two friends, Mike and David, decided that they want to have ice cream for uh, lunch. Ice cream. Okay. Now, Mike, three dollars short of the price of a uh, ice cream uh, scoop. Now, David also short by one dollar. Okay, fine. Then they decided, okay, let's combine our uh, capitals and buy ice cream and we will share it. One, even one scoop we can share it. So they combine them together and they are still short. Well, no ice cream for them, obviously, but my question is how much is 
uh, a scoop of ice cream. Well, as usually, you can just pause the video and think about it yourself. And uh, I actually experimented. I asked one particular person, and uh, she wasn't able to immediately answer it. But after you know a couple of uh, calculations in her head, she figured out what it is. So the answer is very simple. Let's just think about it. Again, common sense. It's not really math. If David is one dollar short, now we're talking about even dollars, uh, 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 whole dollars in, in this case. So if he is one dollar short, okay. If Mike has anything, well, at least one dollar, then that would compensate the shortage and they will be able to find uh, to, to, to buy uh, an ice cream, right? So again, if David is only one dollar short, and if Mike has something on his certain number of dollars, it will be at least one, right? We're talking about whole dollars. Well, that would compensate, and they will be able to do it. But I'm saying that they are not. They are still short. What does it mean? It means that Mike has no money at all. Okay, that's the consequence number one from the fact that even combined uh, amounts of uh, money um, was not sufficient. Okay, however, the next information is he is three dollars short. Now he has no money and he is three dollars short. It means that scoop is how much? Three dollars. Exactly. That's the answer. And incidentally, David has two. So David has two, Mike has zero. Scoop is ice cream, scoop is three dollars. So that's why Mike is three dollars short. David is one dollar short. But if they combine, zero plus two would be still two. That would be still short. Okay? Simple. Don't we need algebra here? <coughs> and the third is also it seems a little bit strange the problem however if you will present it in the good way you will immediately uh, come up with uh, the answer so here it is you have circles and squares certain number some of them are painted red some of them are painted blue now, what's known is that the number of red circles is equal to number of blue squares. Okay, now what's necessary to do? What's necessary to do is evaluate number of red shapes when I'm saying shapes, it means circles or squares. And compare it with number of squares, regardless of the color. So question is, what is greater, what is smaller? Well, from the first like, look at this problem, it's kind of strange. Now, we have this information, that number of red circles is equal to number of blue so, uh, squares, but we don't have any other information. Initial number of red squares, initial number of um, uh, blue circles. I mean, there are some other pieces of information which are seemingly missing to be able to answer this question. Number of squares, that's number of red and blue. I don't know anything about uh, red squares. I, don't, I, I know only that blue squares is equal to red circles. Same thing with this red shape. That might be both red uh, circles and, and red squares, and they don't know information. Not not much information. But apparently, whatever is there is sufficient. And what's important in this case is to present this particular information in a proper fashion. If you present it correctly, you will immediately come up with an answer. Okay. So again think about this, you can pause the video, you can think about this, and here is the solution. Let's do the table.
So you have a red or blue, you have circle or squares. What's necessary to know? Red circle, which is this, equal to blue, which is here. Let's put it x here. Doesn't matter what kind of number this is. All I know is the same number, right? Now, what is number of red shapes? Red shapes are these, right? This plus this. What is number squares? Number squares is these. So what do we have? Number of red shapes is this x plus God knows what. Number of squares is the same x plus the same God knows what. Which means they are equal to each other. This is x plus question mark and this is x plus question mark. Question mark is the same in both cases and x uh, from the uh, condition above is also the same. That's why the sum of these is exactly the same. So number of red shapes is equal to number of squares. Which is not kind of obvious from just looking at the problem, just looking at this kind of a words uh, kind of explaining. But if you put it in this nice table, it's immediately obvious that these are two equal numbers. Okay, so what I suggest you to do right now is um, go to unizor.com to this course Mass Plus and Problems, open arithmetic category and then go to arithmetic 09 and uh, read the uh, problems yourself. They are there. Uh, you have a video presentation and the textual presentation. Textual presentation has the problems and solutions. Logic, basically, this common logic which goes into the solution. Don't read the logic. Instead, since you already know basically what I was talking about, you know all the solutions, write down solutions yourself and write it down in such a way that somebody else, if he reads this, would understand your solution completely. And then compare it to whatever I wrote as a solution on the website. I think it's a very important um, exercise. It will um, kind of help you to put your mind into a proper way of logical and analytical way of explanation of something which is kind of easy and obvious and common sense but to be able to present it in writing it's very important in writing that's that's the key word in writing so open your you know piece of paper or some word processor whatever you want to use um, and put it in writing it's very very important and then read it uh, let it uh, somebody else to read if they understood it, great, means you have achieved your goal. And your goal is to hone your, to, 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 to hone your uh, mind in a specific logical and analytical way. That's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.